Good morning, dear, dear friends. Good morning, colleagues. The show today for this first open day for the academic year 2022-2023. And welcome to Riga Business School. My name is Claudio Rivera. I am the director of the two bachelor, bachelor programs that we are offering, the Bachelor of Business Administration and the Bachelor of IT Leadership. And welcome to everyone that is going to watch this open day during the next days. I'm going to first give some of a very short outlook on Riga Business School. I will ask Paula probably to share the screen. Uh, so we, this is the first open day and we want to, uh, to congratulate you that you are already starting to think about your bachelor studies that in my view, in my experience, and what I have seen is the most important and the, probably the most fun and more interesting part of your studies in the future. I'm sure you are going to do after master's and some of you even doctoral degrees, and you will do many, many programs. But there is nothing that important as a bachelor program, because this is the moment where you actually put the main foundations for your, your future education. And what Riga Business School try to do, and what we do, I think quite successfully, is to bring the best international education home so that you don't need to go anywhere else. So you can stay here and you can study with, with us, taking advantage of the best available faculty members, the best avail available methodologies, and the best available knowledge. Can we go to the next slide, please? So Riga Business School started 30 years ago. It's part of the Riga Technical University that is the oldest and the most prestigious university in Latvia. So it started like a showing uh, project with the university at Buffalo that is a very highly ranked university in the United States and the University of Ottawa from Canada uh, later. Uh, behind Norwegian Business School, that is one of the top 100 business schools in the world, also showing the crew and with the Baltic IT leadership, so also the University of Latvia. And we, we are proud of the fact that what we do the best is to bring the best that is available out there, to put it together and to make it available for you. And that's what we actually do pretty, pretty well. And we are focusing on helping you to build your careers in a world that is full of technology, where technology is a, drive, is a driving force. So we are training people, you know, more business oriented or more IT oriented to be successful in, the, in, in, a, in a world that is shaped by business. Next, please. So this is a little bit the story of RBS. It has been 30 years since the, the beginning when, the, when, the, when, when RBS was established between the three universities and the first program that one day will be also important for you called the MBA. So the Master of Business Administration that is still is the most popular in the region and has been the first Master of Business Administration that we that has existed in the Baltics. Then uh, we created something called the English Language Center that today also for pre-university pre programs. And then we created something that's called Executive MBA. And then later, together with the US Embassy, we established what is called Education USA that actually helps young people to go to the United States for their studies. And then we created the Alumni Association. So, and that's, you know, we have a very strong ne network of graduates. If you look at our 2000, 2000 plus uh, graduates that Riga Business School have, you know, all of them are in very good position in big corporations, in startups, some of them in public organizations, some of them are in Latvia, many people are abroad. So it's a very strong network of alumni that is also very much part of the community. So in 2012, we launched the, the Bachelor of Business Administration. So we will, be, we will be celebrating 10 years next year. It's an amazing accomplishment. We have more than 500 graduates 
and in and 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 you are gonna meet a couple of them in 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 an hour. So then we created the Baltic IT leadership later, and we have many many other projects that uh, are educating future leaders or current leaders in many areas, and we are sort of the big innovation hub of education for Riga Technical University and also for Latvia. Next, please. So, and as I said, what we try to do is we are great educational innovators. So what we do is we take the best that is there in the world and we bring it here. And this is what we do for the bachelor programs as well. And how we do that? So we work together with the best universities and institutions in the world. So we have been working with, for a long time, with the Stalinburg Business School that is the best business school in South Africa, in Africa, and in Africa, one of the best one in Africa with BI Norwegian Business School, that is uh, the, the, the best one in Norway and is one of the top 100 in the world. So then we have been working for long with the IUT, a very exclusive, boutique university nonce in, in Saint Nasir in France. So uh, with now we have the first students in Solbridge in South Korea. So it's the best business school there. So we have the first student already that went to Japan and they are also with the best business school in Japan. And then we are of course cooperating with the University of Latvia in the Baltic IT leadership program. And this year has been the big year of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So we, our students are already attending courses with the MIT. And also we are providing training for many, many Latvian peoples with the MIT. So we are creating the center of excellence with the MIT for universities. So this is a, a, in, in a nutshell, you can see that what we are trying to do is we are trying to work with the best universities in the world that you have available the knowledge, the expertise, the expertise that you have also when, when we create the program. So we are looking what happened in the best places. And then we try to bring that to you. And now I will give the, the, the screen to Paul Elksner, that is the assistant director for the undergraduate programs. He will go a little bit more into the details of what is what do we offer in the bachelor programs. Paola? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, as Claudio said, my name is Paola and uh, I'm really happy to be here today with you virtually though. Uh, I hope that uh, soon you will also be able to visit us here on campus uh, and feel the atmosphere and the vibe that we have here, uh, which I think is pretty great. Uh, but yeah, today my task is to tell you a little bit more about uh, two bachelor programs that we have. Uh, you probably know already a little bit, but uh, I will try to give you some more information so it's easier for you to make the choice. Uh, so the first program that I will talk about is BITL program. Uh, I see on the slide that the letter L has uh, for some reason <laughs> chosen to uh, be somewhere else, but uh, you know, things happen. Uh, but yeah, okay, so the BITL program uh, is a program that we have launched quite recently. Uh, we have three intakes of students, so those who are considering studying in BITL now uh, would be the fourth intake uh, next year. Uh, so this is a program that combines business, uh, IT, and uh, also um, general knowledge, so to say, uh, soft skills, 21st century skills, uh, I will show you later what specifically that means. Uh, so BITL program is a four year long program uh, and uh, you can choose specializations in general management, artificial intelligence or data analytics. And both programs, BITL and BBA that I will talk about uh, just uh, in few minutes, uh, they have great double degree opportunities uh, in Norway and also in the US. Uh, so in the BITL program, you can go to Norway in fourth year uh, to pursue Bachelor of Data Analytics. Uh, so you can actually graduate school in four years with three diplomas in the case of BITL. Uh, you got RBS RTU diploma, uh, University of Latvia diploma, and also diploma from, from BIA Norwegian Business School. And you can also decide to go to uh, State University of New York at Buffalo, uh, and finish your studies there. So in that case, you also 
have three diplomas, uh, one from the US. Uh, and we will have uh, a representative from BI Norwegian Business School just in a few minutes, and he will be able to tell you more what it means to study in Norway. So you will be able to find out more about that. So here you can see uh, more uh, what you will be studying in the BITL program. So as I said, there are three main things. So one is IT, uh, which we have called here algorithms and methods. So there you can see a list of several things that you would be studying. Coding languages, uh, more also uh, systematic thinking, uh, math related subjects. So a lot of that, that would probably be 40, 45% of your studies uh, would be in IT, algorithms, methods, uh, those type of things. Uh, the second uh, batch of things that you would be studying, we call 21st century skills. You can see communication, project management, critical thinking, teamwork. So all of those skills, they are very, very important. And we actually believe that um, studying in university is not only about obtaining knowledge, but it's also about developing as personality, uh, developing skills that are very much needed so you can continue obtaining knowledge in your life. Uh, so we take this aspect very, very seriously, and we want each course that you take to also develop one of these skills for you. And uh, the third uh, batch of subjects that you would be studying in BITL program is business subjects. So you would have finance strategy, uh, you would learn how to manage people, uh, how to work with people. Uh, so um, yeah, also part of the BBA program, so to say. Claudio, anything you would like to add here? You're muted. As you can see, as you can see in the in the VITAL program, and, and this is something that the companies are telling us, we you will have a very strong programming capacity, but you will have the capacity to deal with complex problems, and you will have the capacity to deal with people. So if if you if you go to any of the companies that are doing you know, IT services or are creating IT innovations, you know, from big companies like Deloitte to uh, startups, you know, smaller startups or, or unicorns like Printful. So they need to be working all the time with clients. They need to try to understand their needs. Uh, they need to be all the time giving, discussing with them whether what they are producing is actually what they want. And these are not the skills you will see between the average IT graduates of an IT program. Uh, so, and, and that's why our graduates are so already demanded right now. So they are having our students, we don't have graduates yet in the middle, but our students in the middle that are the oldest are in the third year right now. So they are already being very demanded in internships. So they are going to very cool internship because they have both capacity. They have the capacity to actually code and make the thing but they also have the capacity to present and they have the capacity to listen and they have the understanding of the business side. Very interesting program, it's very unique. No, I, not only in Latvia, it's very unique in Europe. Paula? Yes, thank you, Claudio. Uh, so let's go on to BBA program. And I would like to add that at the end, you will have an opportunity to ask all your questions and we can go into details of the program. Uh, here, we just want to offer you like an overview. Uh, so about BBA program, BBA stands for Bachelor of Business Administration. Uh, this is a program that you could, uh, you could say that it's like a classical business administration program, but it's not a classical or old school, uh, as you might have this connotation with the, with the classical. Um, yeah, it's a very modern program, actually. Uh, we have a lot of project works. Uh, we have a lot of real life problems that we work on in this program. Uh, so yeah, the program is three to four years. You can actually kind of choose the duration. The basic uh, basis of the program is three years long. Uh, so if you choose to study three years in Riga, your program will be three years long and you will get an RBS diploma at the end. And if you take this path, uh, you can choose a specialization of marketing, finance, or entrepreneurship here in Riga. 
uh, as in the Bittel program, uh, you can also choose to uh, pursue a double degree in Norway or in the United States. Uh, so in Norway, BBA students actually have a choice of two types of degrees that they could get. Uh, one is Bachelor of Data Analytics. So that's more numerical. Uh, you would have to take a lot of electives uh, with coding and uh, uh, mathematical subjects uh, to go and pursue that track, but that's an opportunity. Uh, and you could also do Bachelor of Business Administration double degree in Norway. Uh, and the second option, as in the BITL program, is to go to the United States. Uh, and then you, would, um, you could extend your program for one year to three years at Riga and one year in the US. And there you can also choose from a lot of specializations um, that you can pursue uh, with your studies. So just specializing a little bit more. As you know, business is quite broad. Um, yeah, so with uh, the BBA program, uh, you can see that these three batches uh, of subjects that we focus on is uh, one is business subjects. Uh, so everything that you could think of uh, in the business program. So finance, marketing, accounting, uh, strategy, also law, and of course, entrepreneurship. We're very proud of our entrepreneurship initiatives here at RBS. Uh, the second batch, the uh, same as for BITL program, is 21st century skills. We believe that this, this is super important uh, for managers. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very important to know how to work with people, how to manage yourself, how to manage other people. And uh, we have a lot of classes that help you to develop these skills. We are very proud that our students really make a difference in exactly these 21st century skills because the employers, they uh, always say that RBS students, they know how to uh, take this extra step. They know how to work with other people. And that's really what matters now in the workplace. Uh, and the third batch of subjects is uh, essentials of data analytics. We also understand that uh, nowadays it's very, very important to know how to analyze data data is the basis of decision making. So we want our students to be really, really strong in these numerical skills, uh, in ability to understand data, to analyze data, to work with, uh, with programs that help you to do it. Uh, so we have subjects that really push you very hard to develop these skills, but um, it's, it's a very useful skill to have in your career. And here, as Claudio said, that for uh, BITL, we don't really have graduates yet. For BBA, we do have graduates. Uh, we have seven years of, uh, of people graduating. Uh, so uh, now we would be intaking BBA 11. Uh, so yeah, we, we have been, this program has been around for already 11 years. Uh, so I think this slide is really cool for several, several reasons. Uh, those are screenshots from LinkedIn. Uh, if you don't use LinkedIn, you will probably start to use it once you enter RBS. Uh, it's professional Facebook, uh, for those who didn't know. Uh, and yeah, you can see that uh, these are people who have graduated RBS. And if you look what's under their names, you can see that do, they do a lot of very different things. You see there are people in finance, people who are... Um, operational managers, people in sales, people in communications, people in higher education. Uh, so after graduating RBS, you can do a lot of things. You can really choose your path. Business education opens a lot of doors. And um, yeah, as you can see, uh, people really choose to pursue very, very different things. And I think this slide is also very cool for one more reason. Uh, as you can see, uh, next to each of the names, it says first. And what it means uh, in the LinkedIn world is that it's my first connection. So it's someone that I'm connected with on this platform. Uh, so RBS is also a lot about community. Uh, so you see that I know all of these people, all of these people know me, and this is just a small representation uh, of the actual amount uh, of people that you will get to know in RBS. And uh, RBS really offers a very strong community that will afterwards in your career come in very, very handy. Claudio, anything you would like to add here? Yeah, well, I, the, I think you, you, everything you said is, 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 is fantastic. And, uh, you know, we, we like our graduates so much that we bring them back 
to work for us as well here and there when I mean when they have time allow them to do that uh, so we we and that's the signal you know that we are really we're doing a good job and we are happy with the job we are doing that we really see that the level they are getting is higher uh, Paula showed that the the, the 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 bachelor of business administration has a business skill and the 21st century skills and the data skill you know the business part the business block never changes for bba so that's is you know bba is one of the oldest university degrees that exists in the world so there is the first uh, the university at buffalo uh, that you know we've been working with them and build a B, building the bba has the bba for more than 100 years so it's, it's, it's one of the safest programs in the world because it's one of the oldest degree. And this is a good thing, you know, when you go to a university um, and, 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 you know, each one can do whatever, but a BBA is an internationally, absolutely internationally recognized degree. So, I mean, everyone know what a, a BBA is. As far as I know, it's the only BBA in Latvia, by the way. But is in, in 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 that follows these standards so you you go to any university in the world we have students studying anywhere you know like here we have linda but we have people in, in many other universities went for masters or or the, and 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 they they know okay you say you have a bba everyone know what it is now the first part that is a business skills that never changes you know what it changes are the books that you use, the cases that you use, the projects that you use, the faculty members, so they get updated all the time. The second one, the 21st century skills, I think they will not change till you retire in, the, in 50, 60 years, because they they are part of what we call the new economy. They say economy, you know, where you is 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 a lot about connection, it's, it's global, you need to connect with a lot of people, remote work. Uh, very complex problems, a lot of technology involved. So as long as we have the new industrial revolution, you know, that's those 21st century skills are going to be very important in higher education. And we use them a lot. Now, what where there are changes very often is in the server. Uh, so in when when we started the program, students were not getting art programming, for instance, or they now, even if you come to the BBA, even if you don't study in the Beatle, you can take Python and we recommend you to do Python and you can do it for he here to take the courses in programming. You have other programming courses you can take. So here you can go as far as you want in terms of data and technology. Uh, so we, we do a lot of work you know, on automation. So many of our graduates are automating process, creating robots, but these are not robots, physical robots. These are robots that are algorithms that basically automatize processes in business so this is what our bba graduates do so we are very proud of this program oh. yes thank you claudia and here <clears throat> probably what's on your <clears throat> sorry what's on your mind now is that both of these programs sound amazing you want to do both of them uh, so how do you choose uh, so here is the slide to help you to make the choice uh, so you can see that we've kind of tried to compare these programs. Uh, so on the level of uh, qualitative and quantitative skills, uh, you see that BITL is a little bit more quantitative, BBA is a little bit more uh, qualitative skills. Uh, there in, um, in BBA, there is a little bit more of reading and reporting, and in BITL you will have to code a lot. So you see that that's actually the biggest difference that as Claudio said in BBA program, you can decide to also take on computer science and learn how to code, but that's not really mandatory. Uh, so yeah, that's the biggest difference. Uh, for BITL program, you would learn a little bit more analysis, although also in BBA program that's there, uh, as we were talking about um, subjects that help you to uh, learn how to analyze data. And in BBA program, it's a little bit more managerial, more about decision making, more how to uh, take into account all the needed aspects once you make a decision. However, as you can see on the axis, also for BITL program, it's there, so you would also have those skills. And, um, and the last aspect that, uh, that is a little bit different is that BITL is more data centric and BBA is more human centric. Um, so 
those are the differences. You can try to put yourself on these axes and see what fits better, uh, because both of these programs are great. Uh, just there are some slight differences. Uh, probably the coding aspect is the biggest one, I would say. Uh, so if you want to pursue Bittle, you should make sure that you're happy with sitting at the computer for long hours and creating a code. Uh, so that's kind of my tip here, how to make the choice. Claudio, I see you want to add something. Well, yeah, and, and, and one of the places where, you, because you, you can see, okay, how the different look in a daily basis. You know, for the Baltic IT leadership program, all that is programming is obligatory and it's heavy programming during the four years. In the VBA, you go in programming as far as you want. <laughs> so you can also get involved a lot in programming. Uh, we only ask you to program at least in one subset, but but uh, the, the 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 all the other subsets are up to you. But now one of the also big components where there is a big difference where people split is in the internships. So you will see that the Baltic IT leadership students go into coding or IT related internships. Uh, most, most of them, not all of them, but most of them. And in the case of the VBA, you will see that this is a huge variety. You have people going into marketing, into HR, people going into sales, people going into general management, going into project management. So the BBA sort of the, 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 the variety of sectors, you know, where they work in the, during the internship periods, that is once a year. So it's, 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 it's very, very broad. In the, in the case of the Baltic IT leadership, they, they tend to go into more IT related internships during the, the program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's for now about the programs. As I said before, you will be able to meet our students and uh, also graduates and ask some questions to them. Uh, and also we will have a Q&A session at the end. So if you will have any questions about specific details of the program, we'll be happy to answer them. But now I am very happy to invite Matthew from BN Norwegian Business School to tell us a little bit more about double degree opportunities in Norway that I mentioned several times. Yes, thank you very much, Paula. Uh, very happy to be here with everybody today. It's kind of a cloudy day here in Oslo. I don't know what it's like there uh, in Riga, but it's uh, it's cloudy today. So being inside is good, good on the Saturday. Um, yeah, so I've been listening uh, to Paula and Claudio talk about uh, the programs, and I, I tend to agree with kind of what uh, what they were saying about the, the BBA being a program that uh, that is recognized everywhere across the world. Um, so it's one of those programs that uh, you are gaining that broad management uh, knowledge and business, but then uh, like was mentioned by um, Claudio, uh, you're also kind of getting introduced into this new uh, programming digital world with finance and international business. So it's an exciting time for BBA programs everywhere. Um, so I'm here to kind of offer up another opportunity for you as a student of uh, RBS, and that's studying a double degree here in Oslo, Norway at BI Norwegian Business School. So this is the most important question that we get a lot of the times uh, students get, uh, why Norway? Why would you come and study a double degree here with BI Norwegian Business School? On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see kind of all of the, the options that we like to present to people. So I will only touch on a couple of them. And the first one that I'll touch on is equality in culture and society. Um, that's important. Uh, that perspective is important here in Norway due to the fact that uh, in Norway, uh, equality across the genders and in the workplace is very prevalent. Um, you can see this in a number of ways. Uh, one of the ways is equal opportunity to uh, paternity and maternity leave. Um, so in the society uh, here in Norway, uh, gender roles are kind of equal. Males, ha males have, fathers have the same amount of time with their children. They're allowed to have the same amount of time with their children as, as the mothers. And we see, the reason that we mention that is because we see the impact it has on the business uh, world and the business community. Women in business, have proven through research and studies to increase profits by 10 to 15%. Um, so having women continue their career and not have to stop uh, when they decide to have a family has actually increased profits. So that is kind of intertwined throughout society here in Norway um, and having that equal ground for women and men to participate in family life, 
but then it also is increasing profits and business is all about profits. Um, so that is kind of how it, uh, it shows uh, in, in real life, how important it is to be equal. Um, but that also extends into the classroom here at BI Norwegian Business School. International students pay the same tuition fee as Norwegian students. So everybody is, is investing the same amount of money and time into their education. Um, and so we see that that kind of brings this equality throughout the classroom and the learning environment. Another aspect of Norway that we like to highlight is just the, the work-life balance aspect. Norwegians here, they work hard and they're extremely productive in the hours they work, but then they also have a lot of extra additional time outside of the classroom and outside of their jobs to pursue their, uh, their passions, their hobbies, and spend time with their family and friends. And I mentioned productivity, and that is where this comes into play here. So studying in Norway, you get exposed to this work-life balance culture that empowers the employees to have a life outside of work, empowers students to have a life outside of the classroom. And that shows in the results that they have uh, in their daily jobs, in their work, that's hard line profits, but then also in academics, in the school, um, the students are having more of a, a positive output on their mental health, as well as just their academic standing. And the last one we have to highlight here uh, is the English comprehension across Norway, especially here in Oslo, the capital city. It is extremely high. Uh, you do not need to speak Norwegian to study here. Um, everybody here speaks English. I myself am actually from Canada and I do not speak Norwegian yet. Um, and I'm able to get around uh, the city here and the country and everybody speaks English with me. So it, it is, it's nice to have that to rely on and you don't have to worry about a language barrier to kind of um, fit into the community here. Secondly, why BI Norwegian Business School? Why are you going to take the, uh, the chance and the opportunity to come to BI Norwegian Business School to complete a double degree? Well, we're the number one business school here in Norway. So if you're gonna come and study business in Norway, this is the place to study it. Uh, we're a triple crown accredited school, meaning that we're one of the top 1% of business schools worldwide. That's important because that means those accreditations mean that the curriculum is consistently reviewed and updated to meet the industry standards that are being put out there in the real working world. Um, so that is kind of a nice thing to know that the stuff you're learning is going to be applicable to the stuff that you're going to do in your daily day-to-day -day work life. Um, so that is always, always nice to have. And on top of that, we are affordable and a quality business education. But one thing that I will mention here that's not on the screen in terms of studying a double degree here at BI Norwegian Business School and Riga Business School, coming to Norway, you are kind of setting yourself apart from other candidates when you go out into the working world because you have added an international aspect to your education and to your life skills. You are learning and other perspectives that you may not have been exposed to if you had not maybe decided to study internationally, whether it be through an exchange or whether it be through a double degree. Having that opportunity to gain perspectives from others makes you a more well-rounded candidate as you enter into the workforce. And we have seen from our international students that graduate from BI Norwegian Business School that employers come back to BI and say that they appreciate the fact that these students are well-rounded and are able to kind of see more focused areas outside of their own perspectives from their home countries. So it actually gives you a competitive advantage when you are going out into the working world to have a little bit of an international um, flavor to your academic studies. So we'll talk quickly about the bachelor degree programs that you are have an option here. I know Paula and, and Claudio kind of mentioned them. We have the BBA program you can come into and there's three specializations. Uh, the first one is shipping management. Second one is finance. And the third one is international business. And then there is the data science uh, program that you can enter into. Um, that is formally called business analytics, uh, but we made a little bit of a structural change uh, to that program because we found from talking to the business community here in Oslo, that they were looking for more, they were looking for students and graduates that had a little bit more of a data science background. Um, so on their CV and had that previous knowledge coming into the working world. So that program has a new name now. It's going to be the first iteration of it starting in 2022. Um, so that is kind of exciting uh, moving forward. 
And you're asking yourself, well, why, why would I study these specific specializations as a part of the BBA program? Well, if you're gonna, if you're interested in finance, you're looking at automation and digitization. Claudio brought up a great point earlier talking about how everything is becoming, he's talking about the robots within the systems. And that's kind of how finance is kind of uh, moving towards. It is going into robo investments. And that is something that people that come out of school studying finance, they have to understand how that works and have to understand how to take the data that they are collecting and implement it, analyze it, and use it to make decisions in this automated and digitized world in the world of finance. So that is a trend that is not going to stop. That is only going to continue in finance. So at the specialization here, you're going to get that, that perspective of finance um, here at, at BI Norwegian Business School. Now the international business portion, that specialization, that one's all about globalization. Uh, you look at us right now, I I'm sitting here in Oslo, uh, there's people joining from, from Riga and then um, there is the opportunity for people to be joining from all over the place. That is just a small part of how the world has changed in the past 10, 15 years that we can all join each other right now. But you're not just seeing it in through webinars. Companies are now being able to work with other organizations across the world in a more kind of professional and uh, on-demand manner. Right now, you can work with a company in the Asian continent from here in Europe without having to travel and without having to kind of put aside a lot of time uh, to meet these people in person. You can kind of have this, this relationship through technology and globalization is, is the continuing trend in international business. Trading across borders is what is, is happening right now. So you're kind of getting that uh, perspective from the, the year you would take here in the international business side. The third one specialization is shipping management. Now, do people remember earlier this year, or it might have even been last year, the time has flown so fast during this pandemic, but when that ship got stuck in the canal and everything kind of shut down in terms of uh, the shipping industry, uh, goods were not being able to get to certain uh, countries and people were starting to have to pay high prices, that's because the transport sector in shipping makes up about 90% of the trade across the entire world. So shipping is very important to how we live our lives on the daily. Right now, they're forecasting that the Christmas season, there's not going to be enough toys in some of these countries for children because they don't have the materials. They can't ship things across just because of that one incident in the canal has set back the shipping industry months. And they're even forecasting it's even a year or two that it has, has sent it back. So learning that industry there's no other way to ship to, to, to transport goods outside of shipping right now, like large quantities of goods. So that is the most important transport uh, sector in the world right now. So taking that specialization, you're being exposed to learning how the marine industry is really working, the supply chain, the logistics behind it. So if that is something that interests you, then that is a, a, a good option. And then finally, the data science part, which is not a part of the BBA, it is its own separate uh, degree outside of the BBA. Um, the data science, it was mentioned previously, and I 100% agree, data is everything, it is everywhere. Your data was collected when you signed up for this registration. It's going to be used to make decisions uh, later on. And so it, every, everything you need to know about data science is that it's everywhere, and that there has to be a way to understand how to make decisions, good business decisions, um, with this, this amount of data that is floating around in the world everywhere around us. I'll just quickly touch on this because I know that the, this probably isn't the most important, but if you are looking at a double degree, uh, you do have to have a minimum, minimum C average while you're studying at Riga Business School in your courses. Um, we do also have an English uh, requirement, uh, but most of the time you already meet that when you're at Riga Business School. So the one that you probably use to enter Riga Business School, you'll be able to use um, for coming over to the double degree here at BI. There's some important dates on the right-hand side. If you get to that stage, uh, we can have a conversation or Paula and Claudio can have a conversation with you about those dates, but that's just something that you can keep on your long-term radar as some of the important dates. As a partner institution with Riga Business School, you are actually get a 10% discount coming into the, the double degree here at BI Norwegian Business School. So we do charge tuition. Uh, it's about 8,000 euros per year for the year you would spend here in Oslo. And uh, 
we do know that and we do realize that Oslo is known as an expensive place to live. Um, so we, we have set out a little bit of a budget here for students and it's about 12 and a half thousand euros per year. But that includes your housing, your food, uh, your entertainment and your books. And one thing that I will just say about the housing is that uh, it is guaranteed for international students. So coming in, if you apply before that May 1st deadline on the previous slide, you will have housing here in Oslo, which is a big plus because it's extremely difficult to find housing here. And uh, the government subsidizes the housing for students. So it's actually a very good deal for students to get in on that. Lastly, we have some practical information. There's no application fee. Uh, the, re the way you go about applying for the double degree is you get nominated through Riga Business School and then you are sent a, a special link to apply. And that's where you submit all of your application documents. Uh, while you are here in Oslo as an international student, you can work up to 20 hours a week. So that's kind of nice that you can find a job uh, in the service industry is where we see a lot of students, whether it be hotels or restaurants or even clothing stores such as H&M. Um, they get part-time jobs there and they're able to kind of finance a little bit of their, their stay here in Oslo. But that is it for me. Uh, I will stick around and I'm available for questions. Uh, at the end of this, um, but that actually is our campus here in Oslo. Uh, everything is on camp in that one building. It, it is a humongous seven floor building with four separate blocks. Uh, they have a gym in there, a couple of cafeterias, cafes, and a ton of places for students to study and hang out. So it is kind of a really cool environment uh, to learn and then also just to be social in as well. But that is it for me, Paula. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak uh, to some of your prospective students. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, this was very interesting, and uh, I hope that students feel inspired now to pursue this path with uh, BI. Uh, Claudio, I will now give the floor back to you, but uh, also to uh, a bunch of people from our community. Uh, so now we have, I think, overwhelmed you a little bit with information, but we believe that the best way how to uh, really uh, understand and uh, uh, feel if, if this is a path for you is to hear opinions from people who have taken this path or are taking it at the moment. So now we will have a discussion between our alumni, students and faculty members about life here at RBS and it will be facilitated by Claudio. So the Zoom is yours, Claudio. Thank you, Paula. You know, we are in the TikTok area, so we need to go fast and quick. And <laughs> and sharp and uh, so we are going to bring a lot of very smart young people to tell us about their experiences in the RBS. We talk too much because we are very passionate about this and I, I'm happy, I, I really uh, thank you Matthew, Matthew for, for your presentation because you, it was so compact but so interesting. So you, you managed to do that. I hope I will learn those skills in the future as well. But I will bring now our, our, our people so first, uh, I, I have David Indrickson, uh, that is uh, uh, a current student for, for uh, is in the BBA 10 group, so he's a freshman. Uh, David, are you there? And I would like you to start sharing uh, the first things. Could you tell us one favorite story you have about your short time here in Riga Business School? You just started, but could you tell us your favorite story up to now? Yeah, actually, this is a pretty easy one. It was a personal one. So it was my birthday in, in October, and uh, it turned out it was like starting to look like the pandemic was coming. And it seemed like I couldn't really celebrate my birthday. So that was kind of sad. But then my course mates kind of threw me a little party. So they got me donuts. And then we had to study. So it was like a study session, and we were eating donuts. And then Actually, we'll name the person Constantine's from uh, the head of external division. He also found out that I have a birthday, and then he got me candles. So we had donuts with candles. So that was really wholesome, and uh, I'll definitely remember that. So that basically shows how wholesome the whole community is, how connected we are to each other, and uh, how quickly you actually can make friends because it was only the October, and we were already that close. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, October is just five weeks into the program and you're getting done already. I hope you went to the team afterwards. But uh, anyway, so let's go now to a second year student, Liva Valmira. 
that also she has been taking a lead in the bonding camp this year is one of our greatest experience. I hope the students are going to talk about that after. Liva, what's your favorite story? This we one year and a half you are into Rio Business School. Yes, hi. Um, well, the thing that actually came to mind was bond, as you said, but one event that had different big favorite stories is an event called the Freshman Challenge, but unfortunately, I cannot uh, tell you any stories from that evening because we keep that as a secret for now. I will keep it as a secret too. Uh, and talk about when you guys experience it, uh, because I think you will also have uh, many favorite moments. But yeah, because of COVID, we haven't had that much time together. At, uh, so just being at school premises, I would say, is my favorite moment at, at the time. Yeah, thank you, Liva. You know why the freshman challenge is such a good party is when it's the only party where I am not invited to go. <laughs> So bad, but so but 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 is you know you won't hear too much you when know, people say oh I, we want to come back to premises but that happened in areas because of the community the community that and the people yeah. we have thank you Liva Katrina is from the Beetle three uh, we want to have a lot of girl students in the Baltic IT leadership and Katrina is there hi Katrina yes thank you hi. Uh, so if I also have to tell a favorite story of mine, oh, there are so many, uh, but probably one of my most favorites as of right now is that this really close community that we have in the first course. And I would say that it's recently while we're here st uh, stuck in a pandemic, basically stuck in home, uh, during one break, this one long lunch break, me and some of my friends, we just from the course, we just decided to go to Germany during these long holidays. It, it was such an impulsive decision, but um, yeah, now I'm waiting. And it's really cool because those have been only two months and we're already really close to each other. That's amazing. Amazing. Again, the community part and community in an IT program, what is even more, more of an achievement. And, and we have Carlis Kirk for, from Beetle 2. Also, Carlos is one of the leaders of a, pro a project we are very much proud of called uh, Scuolo Internet that has been helping schools all across Latvia to understand how good their internet connection is and what do they need to serve better their students. So, Carlos, welcome. What's your favorite story? Yeah, hi. Um, I, I would say I have definitely some memorable experiences from the bonding camp, but uh, for me, the most memorable stories are the small, small ones where, where uh, maybe half of our course are trying to solve the same problem and they have been at it like for two days and something just clicks and uh, we kind of slowly all get it. And it's, it's kind of, you know, liberating feeling that they, they, they have their they have my back and uh, I, I also support them. Um, and I would say just these small experiences where, uh, where I understand that I'm just a part of, of my course and that they really do care about me and I, I do care about them. as maybe not the case in some other schools. Fantastic, in the, in the programs, in both programs, there is a lot of team building activity. I mean, a, a assignment that has to be run in teams. That is the closest to reality <laughs> because there is no good business or significant business where you work alone. So you always will need to be working in teams. So um, around 50% in every course are team assignments. And now I'm going to bring some of the old people. So our graduates, they are still young, but they are already out of the student category. So uh, I will bring first Yeva Zel Zelkan. She, she has been in the second group of the BBA, BBA 2. I hope she still remember. And uh, she is now in the communication department of the first Latvian unicorn, Primfo. Hi, Eva. Hello. And first of all, old? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're as young as you feel you are. <laughs> I, I feel I am feeling younger every day. Okay. 
Yeah, but which is the favorite story you remember? Okay, um, I think study-wise, uh, my favorite moment or even like a day was, I believe it was the, um, it was the course that you were leading, Claudio, I think. And we had an exam for like, I don't remember uh, at this point, it was 24 or 48 hours, I think. Yeah. Um, that was one of my favorite moments because I had never experienced anything like that. Uh, I think it was the organizational behavior. Um, basically, it was an exam of either 24 or 48 hours. And uh, yeah, I had never seen such an approach in education at least in my experience, where you you know have to work with people in real life, in real life situations, it felt like, you know, imagine how relationships go. You have that honeymoon phase where you all so in love with each other and you think everything will go smoothly. Then you first move in with each other and you start to kind of see the pickles of each other. Um, you know, you go through different stages, arguments, but at the end of the day, all of you together realize that you're actually walking towards the same goal. Uh, and that the goal is not even the exam itself, it's that, you know, you want to graduate and you want to have this experience together. So those were very intense hours of my life, but I loved every bit and piece of them just because how rich of real life experience it was and that I got to go through it with my teammates. Fantastic. What Eva is referring to is called the OB Grand Slam and it's a 24 hour, 48 hour hackathon. Now there are many of these hackathons in the school and also outside the school, but that time it was quite original. So I have to repeat that experience more. Uh, that's a message that I get from Yeva. And, and, and now I, I will invite Agnese uh, Gaza from the BBA3. Agnese was very much involved for one of the success fashion stories called Amorale, but now she's bringing, she's building her own fashion success story. So I, I would say the second fashion success story. The, Agnese, welcome. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Uh, so hello to all. My name is Agnese and I'm uh, the founder of uh, Knitwear brand for Lovers in Trees. Uh, we are uh, creating 100% natural knitwear and exporting all over uh, Europe. And we have big ambitions and a goal to be the leading knitwear brand in, in Europe by 2023 with a meaningful voice and strong opinion. So yeah, I'm happy to be here and share my experience because it was truly life-changing. And one of my favorite moments that I remember is also Grand Slam that Eva mentioned before. In my memory, it was 72 hours. I don't remember <laughs> exactly. Maybe it was 48 or 70 hours, but I remember it as it really intense, uh, fast paced uh, environment. When we like imagine coming from a high school with strict uh, system and the way how you're supposed to do things. And then you get into this kind of uh, environment when you have 72 hours intense exam, when you have to cooperate with a large group of people in our case, it, was, it consisted of half of our course mates. So we have actually to, <laughs> we had to cooperate with each other. And the, the thing I loved it, um, the thing I loved uh, the most about it was that each of us found a way to actually bring value to the group. Some of the people managed to be become leaders some of us managed to become creators some of us were managers that actually structurized the rest of the group so each of us found a way how to bring value to the group to think creatively and uh, really critically it was really life-changing and at the end of the exam we actually made um it was a dating site <laughs> yeah so it was a dating site and yeah the whole experience was uh, truly extraordinary thank you i'm gonna say that uh, so i'm happy to hear about those 
that you still keep those phone memory and you don't hate me for those 48 and 72 hours. <laughs> now we have something called the first year seminar runs for the whole semester. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's 200 hours uh, where they do a very tough project. But I, I might be thinking to come back to the Grand Slam after Thank I hear you. both of you. Uh, I will bring now Bruno, Bruno Kressley. He, he's a recent graduate from BBA 7 and Bruno works in Swedbank in something very mysterious called AML that we didn't know it existed when we created the program. Hello, Bruno. Hi. <laughs> uh, sorry, my camera refused to work today. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, my favorite moment in RBS, um, man, there are uh, so many. <laughs> Uh, but the one uh, that most uh, remained in my hand was actually before in RBS. I, I started to studying in it uh, called the Silicon Valley Challenge. But I won't go into it more in more detail because it's an interesting event for uh, new uh, applicants to the school. Uh, but uh, kind of a favorite event that I can share is, uh, for example, uh, you, the exams, uh, sometimes they are, un, are not traditional. They don't require pen and paper to complete, but uh, for in case in the, our, our general class, we had to do a gallery exhibit uh, for our grandparents and their stories. So organizing that uh, exam, as to say, is was a really interesting challenge and an interesting take on how to uh, present your knowledge and skill and organization because we had to the whole course we had to work together to come uh, and uh, make this interesting event for uh, our our uh, also our other students uh, faculty and outside people. Thank you, Bruno. And you see the mechanics and the, and the logic behind the Grand Slam and the Silicon Valley Challenge and the first year seminar that we have now and many other projects. Uh, project-based learning is part, the core part of the RBS. And then when you go out there, so you, uh, many companies have these type of things in different formats and they need them. So you bring that capacity that is already built here. And now I will bring two of our great, great faculty members. First, uh, Yanis Lasovskis, that he is uh, uh, also an assistant uh, uh, academic advisor for the Baltic IT leadership and Yanis He's a mathematician and teach both uh, teach mathematics and also some very advanced mathematical quantitative related subjects. Yanis, uh, welcome. And what is your say hello? And what is your first your favorite story in RBS? You are here for a couple of years almost. Hello, Claudio. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I, I definitely have a lot of a lot of favorite moments. Very many of them are uh, exactly as others mentioned about the community, about the people here. I, I have more contact with the um, with the faculty, at least at least in my in my day to day environment and sort of my my needs, my questions, and it's 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 always surprising how receptive everyone is to whenever I have some issues or things I want to be changed. As Claudia mentioned, my background is is in a very technical area, just just pure mathematics, and so coming into the Riga Business School, I was. I was worried, you know, will I have to adjust my skills? Will I have to teach completely differently? But that's not the case. And, and that's what I think makes Riga Business School so special, that there is all this, um, as I mentioned before, all this human-centered um, skills, but also these, uh, these technical skills. And, and there's huge support for that. Um, I don't know. I think, I think probably one of my favorite moments is just, yeah, just, just a small moment when I was coming from my office on the fourth floor down to the first floor to teach. And then on every single level, I met someone, I said something, hey, um, I, I would like to have this change. Is that possible? They said, yeah, sure. Then I, then I saw Claudia on the second floor, said hi to him, said, I'm going to stop by here later. And it's just, it's just, a, it's just a nice feeling to, to feel like almost like you're at home because everyone's nice, everyone's welcoming, ready to adjust, ready to, to help you make the best program possible. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I think, I think everything is great here at um, RBS. Thank you, Yanis. Yanis referring to, uh, we have, a, it's very American in style and, and, and it's open doors, uh, you know, get, let's get the shop done together. Let's think on the big things, but they try to do things together and always the students in the center of everything. 
And, and now I will invite uh, Anita, who's a very learned and dedicated faculty member, but also very experienced in business. He has been working for uh, very significant businesses like Herbal, Citadella. Anita, welcome. Uh, welcome. So my favorite story, and uh, I was also like, uh, as Claudia mentioned, uh, have been for a while already with uh, amazing RBS team. And I can agree to every word that has to be uh, said up to now, either by current students or by faculty members or Claudia or Paul. It's a really great place to be and people to work with. And uh, these favorite stories, I think, happen all the, all the time and uh, every day. So, for example, during this session, um, rector of the RBS came across and we just had a nice chit chat about how the things are going <laughs> until there was some presentation. And it's, it's just normal. It's not something that uh, will be very extraordinary. So it's uh, very welcoming. Uh, but uh, when it comes to my favorite story, I think it was just before we had this third lockdown. Uh, it was like we had to work on uh, Monday and Tuesday here in the school and then it was like that, that everybody will go and work in the Zoom. And I had a class on Tuesday and I was coming to the class and I thought, oh, then no one will come to this class because it's like uh, very close to the lockdown and people will be uh, most preferred to be at home. And to my big surprise, uh, all students who used to come to the class, they were there just to be together. <laughs> and that's, I think, is a uh, really great story to know. Fantastic. You, you, you know, for, for, for those that... Uh that are attending the, today and watching on Zoom. Uh, I mean, the big organizations, for big organizations, it's not only about producing a great product, it's to create the community around the product that can deliver. It's very hard to be competitive and to win in, in business. So you need a strong community. If you learn how to do it already here. Also a, a career in business and in IT is, is very long and it's very, it's, it's very interesting, very exciting. It's very difficult. And you need all the time support. You know? So we, we want you to learn how to create that support network around you and how to be part and to have your own community from here. I will go on the uh, re reverse direction right now. And first with Anita. Anita, what is different in RBS students now as a faculty member? You have been teaching many places uh, and you have been working with a lot of young people as well. So what is different in RBS students? I noticed that RBS students are different <laughs> because sometimes there's like some overall uh, pre-assumptions about how these new generations, uh, that and millennials, how they look like and how they perform. And whenever I enter with somebody in discussion about, so, okay, so what's, uh, how do the young people behave? I, I have just the best to say that people are with very good initiative. They are very smart, very fast, uh, very uh, fun and uh, really hardworking and really dedicated to what's, uh, whatever is on their minds, whatever they are willing to achieve. They like challenges and uh, this is, goes also for the teaching. That's uh, why it's not boring here to teach is that uh, you have to learn all the time because uh, uh, it's um, new technologies and new thoughts are coming in and it's uh, really great that we can uh, create this knowledge together. Nevertheless, uh, it might be just uh, that uh, people have just 19 years old, but it's, uh, there is still a lot of uh, knowing and understanding of uh, how the world is built and what uh, people are willing to do there. So. Fantastic. I, actually, when you say uh, RBS is a place, I have been t in higher education for 20 years. <laughs> And, but this is a place where you always have to prepare to go to class and, and uh, because people really, really study and, and, and they, 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 they know what is going on, right? They have a lot of experiences. Yanis, what's, I mean, you have been also working in many places and then you've been a student at several universities. What is different in RBS students? Yeah, I think, well, it's, it's sort of a tough question. I don't want to say anything too overly specific because I don't want to put this, this frame around what, a, what an RBS student should be. But, but I certainly think that uh, a, a common trait among all RBS students is that they are open, that they are inquisitive. And it's not only that they display this characteristic, but the, the faculty members and the, uh, and the people who work 
at RBS encourage it. And, and that makes it, um, makes it even better because as, as was mentioned, uh, you need to adapt. Uh, all these things that we teach you today that we teach you in these four years, well, um, those particular skills, you will need to apply them to whatever new thing will happen that we have no idea what will be. All that we know is that we can give you the skills, the basic foundational skills that will, that will work everywhere. And, um, and RBS students definitely, I mean, I see them change. I've only been here for, now it's, now it's a year and a half, but even, even sometimes over the course of a week, you know, it looks like, well, while well, the student, uh, you know, they're having a hard time, it's a difficult topic, but as soon as um, I phrase the question differently, um, other students come to help them, or there's, or there's a, um, a shift in the environment, then the student um, has a completely different perspective, and they see things in a different way, their attitude changes, their work um, gets better. So I think that's the, that's the common thread. People are, are ready to change, ready to see things in a different light, and ready to hear um, about new, crazy, weird, wonderful, easy, difficult things. Um, and they just, they just roll with it. And uh, that's, that's a very, very important trait. Fantastic. Thank you. Perspective, creativity. Bruno, what if you have to single out something you learned that in RBS that now makes a difference for you? Uh, okay, uh, well, in my line of work, in working in AML, uh, like the courses themselves, they, I, it's hard to say, but they didn't really help. Like the knowledge doesn't really help. But the thing that the, the lectures that they teach you, the way you think, the way you, how, how you view the world, how you interact with people, that is the core value that ha has, I have taken from the RBS and uh, I'm, am I'm, I'm applying in uh, my line of work. So this critical thinking that Claudio is really, really passionate about and will uh, remind you every opportunity he gets, it's a very important skill that you need to learn and then and, and you can take and really apply it everywhere in, the, in your future. And after what you say, I am even a biggest fan of critical thinking. Uh, Agnes, what are the main opportunities RBS open to you? Oh, the main opportunities, wow. Well, there's so many. If you're generally a motivated person that is able to grasp the opportunities life gives you, you will learn a lot. Like, uh, if, I have, like if I had to describe my experience at RBS in one sentence, it would be extraordinary experience out of the box learning, international professors and world renowned, world renowned professors and community, the best community that you can possibly imagine. Some of my best friends come from RBS <laughs> and there are like so many opportunities as Bruno mentioned, where you can learn how to think critically and learn how to think creatively that has influenced my career path so much. And actually one of uh, professors at that time, uh, she was teaching marketing and she became a huge inspiration for me. And at that time she worked at my that time dream company that I later on worked myself. Uh, so there are so many opportunities starting from learning how to invest your money till how to become an entrepreneur and just generally being a curious person that always strives to learn more to give more to create more Fantastic. Those are, yeah those are the main things <laughs> amazing Yeva, tell me one skill you got here that is making you successful in printful or in other mm. I don't know is pushing through a skill <laughs> um, absolutely absolutely yeah I remember but, I mean don't get me wrong I loved my experience at RBS but I also didn't like some stuff um okay. so I always felt that um 
you know, we have, we as students have the ability to change things. And, you know, me, I was the BBA too. So only the second year of graduation of the bachelor program. So the program was also relatively new. Um, you know, I believe that a lot of things have changed by now, but that challenge of, you know, oh, this is such a fresh program. Let's see what, how we can spice it up. <laughs> was it was very uh nice i want to say um you know together with our uh, course mates we would constantly <laughs> come up with ideas what we would improve or what should we do more of you know within the student union for example the divisions that we founded and the roles we took on um you know and we always felt supported by the school. So let's say we would come up, you know, I, I remember at that time I was leading education division, for example, and if you would come up with some ideas that, hey, you know, by having this offsite visit to a company or, you know, doing something out of the school together, uh, we would benefit. Um, the school always supported that. So I guess I'm just happy that RBS didn't try to you know, shut down my urge to push through and push for the better. Um, uh, I think it was a very good partnership. Um, you know, the school gives us the opportunity to come forward with your ideas. Um, and that's something that I appreciate the most. Uh, one of the things I appreciate the most uh, and something that has been very handy uh, in my future as well. You know, just never being afraid to say what I mean. Uh, or expressing my opinions um, and just knowing that there are people on the other side um, that will listen to it and well either agree or disagree but you know that's a different story <laughs> but uh, definitely motivating me to speak up my mind regardless of the situation regardless of the opinion uh, and that is something that I really wish on everyone to experience that and to experience faculty uh, you know teachers and administration that just don't shut it down but that actually um, you know encourage that in students so pushing through I guess would be my answer Good, that, that's fantastic yeah I mean I think it's not worth it to invest time and energy in a place that doesn't want to grow and doesn't want to take the feedback and doesn't want to learn together so that and, and we want that to happen of course that we we can move things forward and 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 we it, it continues to be the case that the students influence a lot uh, the program so that continues to be the case and now we are short of time so i will ask the, the four students to answer very shortly to two things. Number one, what is the thing that surprised you the most? And the number two, which is the SpaceX you think RBS will help you to build because of having studying in RBS? Let's start with Carly. Well, uh, what surprised me the most was uh, I didn't have many expectations when I came to this school. Uh, for, for example, my other peers maybe had some expectations. Uh, for me, it was a blank slate. So uh, coming to this school uh, in the first first course, first semester, it was uh, quite surprising because I really didn't have any expectations and everything just blew, blew me away. And uh, I kind of felt like a toddler who is introduced to a new concept like uh, these cool lectures or these interesting approaches that actually work or, or this, this everything basically so that would be my answer which is the spacex you want to build that you think um, you can help it to build well if if I, if I knew then i would already start start working on it but uh i would say something related with time with a time studying it's um, combining business with ID and uh, given all also in these interesting contacts uh, I, I have already gathered or will gather at RBS it will definitely would help so I'm not sure fantastic Katrina what surprised you and what do you want what do you think we can help you to build well uh, I feel like the most surprising thing definitely is this uh, not the community of RBS, but the 
lectures and the board of RBS because I never imagined that we could just go in, talk to anyone, that we have these uh, morning coffee routines. We can join and just talk about life that even you guys, Claudia and Paula, you attend the parties. It, it, it really, it feels like home with the, with these kind of parents in a way. Um, but the thing we can build, of course, I don't have the idea yet, but I feel like it's anything I can imagine with the skills I have and with the skills I will get in RBS because it's an amazing place for its study. Fantastic, thank you. Liva, what surprised you? What do you want to build? Yes, uh, well, first of all, I totally agree with uh, Katrina. Uh, she described it very well, but also I was very surprised how um, competent and smart my course mates and overall people at school are, uh, because when I started getting to know every person at RBS, I realized that literally everyone has goals, they have vision for their future, they're ready to do and make something, and uh, they have a very great knowledge about some awesome stuff. And it's really nice to surround yourself with motivated people like that. And also knowing that I, if I have a problem with, uh, for example, my first business, I can go to Marcus. And if I need social media tips, I can go to Nuera. If I have questions about literally solar panels, I can go to Elvis. And if I have accounting and tax problems, I can go to Anita. So yeah. Uh, every single person has their own special skills, which makes us a great team. And um, yeah, it was a nice surprise how a uh, driven group of people RBS has put together. And uh, SpaceX, yeah, I'm also looking forward to find that out myself. At the moment, I definitely have no idea, but I can guarantee that RBS will and has already helped me in different ways and uh, shaped my goals and opened my eyes to a lot of things. And uh, well, I still have one and a half year left, so we will see then, I guess, <laughs> but uh, because okay. I believe a lot of will change uh, through this time. But I would say that every lesson I attend uh, broadens my perspective and helps to build my own future basics. Fantastic, Lydia. But I see you have a team already built. Yeah. You your yeah. Own company. That's that's what I hear from your from, from, from putting every person in one function already. Uh, David, you are the last one. Um, what surprised you and what's your dream? Katrina, it's a big statement that it was the people. And basically, when you're in high school, the people that are there, they have different interests. So there's a lot of people put together and they may not necessarily have the same vision and they may not be like-minded as you. But when you're in this school, everyone is like-minded. Everyone has an interest in business. When you work in groups, everyone really wants to work and really wants to contribute to help. So that was really surprising. Like the people that are there, everyone has their own dreams. The stereotype that, uh, it's not a stereotype, it's just common sense that people who are motivated, they also have other interests. Yes, there are a lot of, a huge diversity of people here with a lot of different interests. So you can really learn from everyone here. And my next space X, well, I like to actually say that as I as everything was said before me, uh, RBS gives you the fundamentals of business from what I've seen so far, and it really teaches you how to think. So if you know how to think, how to speak, how to read, and how to write, you really have a deadly weapon. And at that point, I'd say the sky is the limit. So RBS can really help you in your journey in whatever you want to accomplish. I mean, while I've been here, while I've been introduced to business, I've seen the fundamentals. I've came up with like a lot of different business ideas. So I won't exactly go into a different one and a, a specific one, but I really think the sky is the limit. If you actually use the time or actually use all the opportunities that you have that are given in school well that's my answer fantastic. yeah fantastic i would like to be talking to you to all of you for hours but uh, if that happens paula will not be my friend anymore 
So I'm gonna hand over the screen to Paula now to go on with, this, with the last part of the day. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I think it was really inspiring and uh, I could relate to many of the things that you said. Uh, as uh, some of you may know, I'm also a graduate of RBS. So it was uh, really, really interesting and in a way very emotional to hear what you were saying. So thank you so much. If you can uh, still uh, stay here till the Q&A session, I would really appreciate it. Uh, but anyways, thanks a lot. Uh, so now I will hand over, over to Carlis and Constantines uh, from Student Union, who will tell you a little bit more about what's going on in the school um, now. Hi, right, just a moment, I will share screen. Sarah, do you see it? Yes. Great. So, hi, I'm Constantine. Uh, hi, I'm Carlos. <laughs> yeah. So, we are from Student Union Board, but we are actually more than just uh, six people. There are up to 50 people who take an active part in uh, Student Union and in our student life. So, uh, today we're going to speak about five things how Student Union is involved in uh, our life. And uh, yeah, basically how our student life happens. A third thing is about communication. Well, it's so easy to communicate here at Riga Business School because we are actually a little community, but very powerful one. And that, that makes us special, that makes an advantage because we know each other. We have plenty of activities which bond us we, it's so easy to communicate with people. It's so easy to make friends, make connections, expand your network. Well, network is not only just uh, making friends and outly, it's also about making connections with potential employers or businesses or whatever, and how student union is involved. We have an amazing PR team, which works a lot to strengthen communication between students student union and faculty. That's why we have amazing social media where we share about our activities, upcoming events, everything what our students are interested in. And even we are now remotely, we still uh, doesn't stop, our, stop any of our activity. We do a lot to maintain connection with our community. And um, from, my, uh, from my part, I would also add that I feel so comfortable here at Riga Business School because, like, let's take Paula, she's our bachelor program manager. I feel so easy to always just message her or just go and have a talk if I need any help. Or we have so many amazing community managers uh, whom you can also just go and speak and whatever uh, issues you worry about. Uh, next part is about our culture. Well, Student Union does a lot to make, um, to make events which bond, which bond us. And we have a lot of traditional events like New Year party or Halloween, Valentine's Day, final party. But we all have some special events like uh, bonding camp. We have um, beer pong. We have card order heading. We, and these events really keeps us united. and. Uh, the most important that students are always welcome to be both participants and both organizers. We have here the Trigger Business School, uh, here at Steen Hinnon, several divisions where students already at the first course, the, at the beginning can join us and uh, do events or look for sponsors or a good make photos or whatever they want to do and whatever, or like, any contribution they're willing to do. And um, yeah, basically most of people who are today, you can even see here that these are most active people who takes participation, help us. And um, if we speak about events, what I value also here at the Tricky Business School that our faculty is active too, because like just a moment, we will reach out the last one. Or do you see that we have some special events, like for example, Thanksgiving Day, 
just a moment, Thanksgiving Day, where, for example, our school's director, Jans Grevich, um, makes his signature dish for this uh, beautiful event. Or you can see our Claudia uh, who takes an active part in events and other, other faculty members. So yeah, that's, that's make our school special because uh, we split studies and fun. And at the same time, it's strengthening us. And um, yeah, basically it, it, we even have a rule that study, uh, study hard and party hard consciously, but, but still, yeah. So such a rule. And um, yeah, now we speak about next part, Carlis, your stage. Yeah. So the third one would be support, uh, be it support with uh, activities as, as constant, constant in or the outlined or cultural events or, or with uh, academic support, be it uh, your peers help you with some, uh, some bugs in programming or something where you have looked at it for hours at the end or be it some problems with uh, within the course and uh, the fourth one would be growth so of course um, uh, by being a part of the student union uh, you have many amazing opportunities for growth uh, i would say that our student union president has a lot of uh, a lot of obligations and it really encourages growth or being just a part of a division. Uh, there are many opportunities you can take which you want for growth, uh, be it personal development or uh, leadership skills or communication skills, which are also very, very important in life. And uh, yeah, I, I, I will give, give it back to Constantine's now. Yeah, and just uh, to sum up, a fifth point could be just we are so like agile, adaptive to any circumstances. Even being now remotely studying, we have events like the latest one, Halloween, which we held online. And it was so great that even we are remotely, but we still keep our community united and we have made fun. We, we also organize a lot of like game nights or uh, any other just online meetings or meetings even in the morning, uh, which helps us to like or, or wake up and uh, be prepared for studies, like kind of drinking coffee together in the morning. And they, it's so special because uh, it's so easy and it's special. And yeah, that's why I love our school and um, everybody is open to, is welcome to bring his contribution, uh, bring his feedback, critics or whatever. But like other people said today that it's so easy to just uh, say something that you should that you would like to change. And uh, as we are very close to faculty, they will always listen to us. And being a specialist student union, it makes even more closer and has like gives us more opportunities. So we hope that uh, we will see that people who are interested uh, in our school during other uh, open meetings and uh, you will have an opportunity to speak to us and we will share more experience with you. So yeah, see you and uh, we have Q&A session. If you have any questions, just welcome. Thanks. Thank you guys. This was really, really cool. And uh, I want to compliment the choice of pictures, like really shows the atmosphere in school. Thank you so much. This was uh, really nice. Uh, and now the last part of the open door days before the questions, which is probably uh, something that you're waiting for. I hope you have a lot of questions. Uh, so before that, I want to talk about admissions because that's probably something that you are interested in. Uh, so here is the admissions timeline. Uh, and this will can be can serve you as a guide of how to get into RBS. So you see that the deadline to submit your application package is April 28th this year. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is very much different from uh, a lot of universities uh, in Latvia because there you apply in July for us, you apply in April. So um, yeah, don't forget that it's, uh, it's early uh, because um, there are still many things that you have to do afterwards. Uh, so the deadline, April 28th, Afterwards, you have to take a math entrance exam. It's on April 30, so you can mark that in your calendars already. 
Uh, I will later on show you some of the things that, uh, that we test in the math exam. And as we go on, uh, you will also have an opportunity to join uh, sessions uh, where our math professors will explain a little bit more uh, what the exam will be, uh, what you should know, etc. So you can be really well prepared for that. Um, then uh, those who do well in the math exam uh, and those who also do well in the English exam, because in the meanwhile, you also have to take English proficiency test. Those people are invited to individual interview. Uh, and then afterwards, in the June 21st, you will find out if you're admitted to RBS. Um, so what are the admissions criteria? So you have to do all of this stuff. Uh, but uh, basically, there are four components, how we will know, how we will decide who is admitted. So 25% is your math entrance exam. So here we really want to emphasize that in both programs, BBA and BITL, uh, logical thinking, numerical thinking, uh, knowing, uh, knowing math and understanding math is very, very important. That's why you see that 25% of your admission score consists of your score in the math entrance exam. Then 25% is the interview. Uh, this shows that we really care about people that we welcome to our community. Uh, as you probably heard from all of the speakers, everyone really appreciates the, the people here at RBS. Uh, they appreciate the community uh, working together. So we really want to know that the people we welcome there, they are the type of people that we want here. Uh, so that's the interview element there. Then 25% is English proficiency. <clears throat> so you can see on the slide that um, you can take IELTS exam, TOEFL exam, uh, or there's one more type of exam that we may offer if we will not be able uh, to allow you to come to campus to take the exams. But anyways, you have to perform <clears throat> good in these English exams uh, because obviously everything here happens in English. So we need our students to have a good level. And then 25% is secondary education, which means we look at your grade transcripts and your grades in math, English, uh, math and English uh, throughout 10th, 11th and 12th grade. Uh, and, uh, and that's the score there. So uh, what else is important for us? Uh, in the individual interview, we also talk about the extracurricular activities. So anything that you have been doing during your high school uh, that, that is outside the studies. It may be maybe some hobbies like choir or, or sports, or it may be maybe student union in your school. We really care about those things. We want students who are smart, but also active. Uh, students who are not only focused on studies, but students who are willing and able to do more. Uh, so if you're not doing anything extra yet, you still have time. So um, you can join a student club or student union in your school. We will be really, really happy to hear about your experience there during the individual interview. So this is very technical. Uh, as I said, the application deadline is April 28th, but I really suggest you to start preparing early because you see that all of this, these eight items are needed for the application. So we have an application form that you can find online, uh, which will take some time to fill it. We ask about your extracurricular activities, about your grades, uh, and uh, many other questions. Then we need the TOEFL or IELTS, we need your grade transcripts, we also need a motivation letter, and we need two recommendation letters. Uh, so good idea is to choose uh, one, uh, one like a recommendation letter to have it from your teacher, and a second recommendation letter to have from someone that's related to your extracurricular activities. Um, yeah, so don't leave it to the last week because you probably want the best recommendation letter that you can get for the application. And probably something that all of you are interested in as well, scholarship opportunities. We have, uh, we have scholarships. To get the scholarship, you have to also apply by April 28th. If you apply late, then, uh, then you won't be considered for the scholarship. But as you can see, we have several opportunities. Uh, if you're a basketball player, that, then you can apply for RBS basketball scholarship. Uh, we, we also have Learn Bootcamp scholarship, uh, which will take place in January. So you will still be able to apply and get a full scholarship for studies in January. 
uh, you can find information about that on our web page afterwards. Uh, but the general scholarships, so to say, they're called RBS Excellence Scholarships. Uh, and student, the best students who apply get those scholarships. Uh, and uh, the way how we decide who gets the scholarship is based on this, um, just based on the best score. You saw that uh, there are four items that we evaluate. So students who perform the best at these four items, they get the scholarship. And yeah, we have also an opportunities that can help you to prepare for the admissions. Uh, it's called pre-university center. Uh, and there are several things that, that we do there that can help you to be better prepared. We have English courses, we have courses in maths, and we have also courses that are specifically designed to help you to prepare better for the exams uh, that, that you will have at the end of the year in the 12th grade. So you can also um, check out our webpage and just uh, see the dates when they start. And um, this is really something that can help you to be better prepared. Yeah, and also uh, just wanted to let you know about the next event uh, that we will be having. On December 8th, we will have a webinar about opportunities in BI. So you already got some insights today, uh, but we want to tell you more. We want you to meet students who are studying there uh, and just understand more in depth if this is something that can add value to your RBS experience. So that's just a date that you can mark in your calendars as well to learn more about RBS. But now I would want to open it up to questions. So if you have any questions, this is the time to ask them. You can unmute your mic and ask, or uh, you can write in chat as well, that's fine. So let's see if there are any questions. Martin, go ahead, I, I, I feel that you have a question. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you feel correctly. Uh, I was just uh, I was looking for information about about your study programs and uh, stuff like that. And in the in the web page of University of Latvia, I read that uh, the specialization for this BITL program is also uh, computer science or information technology, uh, uh, computer uh, security. Uh, or information technology security, something like that. And but I didn't see that in your slide. Is it like all information or just incorporated in the in those courses that are that are uh, now active? Mm -hmm. I can take that question. Yeah. So the thank you, Martin. Jen. I'm happy to see that you go into those details already. And computer security is one of the most prospective careers, especially because there are lack of experts in the region and because there are more threats, right? So the I, the computer security specialization, you can do it at this moment, is available if you go to Buffalo, but it's still at this moment as, as we speak. But in the you we have a, a course in computer security, and there are some other elements on computer security, but the specialization meaning that you finish a degree and then you also get an additional uh, degree in, in both IT leadership and then you get the specialization certificate at this current moment is not yet available so we uh, that will be we will start building up as we start to have more students and also we are uh, training faculty members we didn't talk about that now but we are training around 20 faculty members a year that we are sending them for one semester to the United States so they are getting up to speed in, in some of these subjects. So probably, but it's not sure, but probably by, by the time you are in the fourth year, that is when the specialization happens, probably computer security also will be here available in Riga. At this moment, we have one subject. We have some elements on computer security all across the program, uh, but it's not at this moment available. Now we have artificial intelligence, we have uh, general in, in Riga, we have artificial intelligence, we have general management as part as a specialization of, uh, in, of the beetle. Okay, and we, and we are now looking to build uh, bioengineering and computer security as a next two specialization. Okay. Mm -hmm. But despite the fact that the paper is not gonna be there, you will have the, 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 the knowledge, I mean, the skill, but in order to have a specialization, you need four, at least four subjects that are specific on computer security. 
Did you answer your question, Martin? Yeah, thank you. I, I had another one. If I, I go for can, it. Yeah. Uh, go for it now. Yeah. Uh, about those um, scholarships, how many students usually get it, or like percentage of them, or like how many students are in this course in this in this study program, and how many get this scholarship usually, or just mm -hmm. main means main round of them? Yeah, it it depends. Uh, it's the most popular answer in the business world. It depends, uh, but but no, I can give you some approximation. So in the BBA program, approximately uh, ten percent of uh, students get the scholarship. Uh, in the BITL program, uh, it's a little bit more. It's approximately thirty to forty percent of students. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah. Maybe something else. No. Not anymore. For now, if something else comes up, just uh, just uh, say that. Uh, okay, I see some uh, questions in the chat, and one of them is that we said that we are going to teach entrepreneurship. How do we teach that? What exactly is that? And I think here I see Agnes said that you're still around. Uh, are you still here? Yeah. Uh, maybe we could ask you to let us know what skills that um, that we taught at RBS helped you to launch your business and then we can go to claudio who can give a more maybe academic answer so yeah thanks agnese we don't hear you hmm. It seems that something's Agnes, yeah, are you there? Okay, uh, I might, yeah. go, there, there may be some issue with the connection. Uh, thank funding. you for the question. Okay. Uh, well, there are so many courts as the, yeah, do you hear yeah, me? Yeah, go ahead. yeah, now we hear you. No, it seems that there is a problem. Claudia, maybe you can go yeah? ahead. And... Okay. I'm going to say, I'm, unfortunately, it seems you have some problem with your connection. So I will, maybe you can, uh, I, I, I will start to answer. Maybe you can check your connection internet. So the, the it's an excellent question, by the way. So the, the there are different ways, one, uh, there, and, uh, may, mainly two, one is, the entrepreneurial skills that that are needed regardless whether you will start like Agnes started here her own business regardless if you are gonna do create your own business so there there you will need to be very entrepreneurial in because you will need to start projects you will need to drive what Eva said and it's amazing so that you need to push for project forward so that implies a lot of entrepreneurial skills so how we teach that, I mean, you learn through projects. <laughs> so you have to be running projects and projects and projects. So you have projects all the time in the, in, in the courses and also in the student union and in the internships. Then you have the most specific content for those that are more interested in the startups. So there is there are two courses uh, that are specific, specific on entrepreneurship. Uh, so one is on social entrepreneurship, the other is on startups. Then we, we have a lot of activities, you know, that either we run or are connected with us, you know, like uh, being part of the startup community in different, in different ways, uh, helping young people to create their own businesses. Uh, we have the Innovation Academy right now. So we have uh, the Design Factory where you can do prototyping. So we have many of these things that are more toward those students that are more interested on startups. But regard, if you are not interested in startups, you will be in, I mean, you, we want you to develop, develop your entrepreneurial skills anyway. And, and that is part of the content. But I don't know if Agnes is back and can share the, the, the her thoughts. Are you back, Agnes? It seems we lost Agnes. Paula. Yeah, it seems so. If she if she comes back, then we, then we will get back to this question. Okay. Um, 
Okay, then the next question from Anna is, is it possible to find math exam from previous years to prepare? So we will not post the last year's exam, uh, but we will... Yeah, uh, maybe I'll just finish this and then we come back to you. Uh, so yeah, yes, we will we have you. the sessions. Uh, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it seems that we're in the <laughs> different time zones <laughs> with Agnesa. But let, let's hope we figure that one out. But yeah, about preparing to math, for maths exam. Uh, so we will have sessions where you will find out what types of tasks will be there and uh, you will be able to prepare. Uh, so I think that will be very helpful. And then those will be uh, will take place, I think, starting February. So there will be specific dates in our web page um, in the very near future. Okay. And then the next question from Yekaterina is that uh, she wants to know about budget places. Are uh, in the are there in the university budget places? and what you have to do to get the budget places. Yeah, so the budget places, we call them scholarships. Uh, so there are scholarships, and I think we kind of answered this question uh, also for Martin. So, uh, so there, there are specific amount of people, uh, amount of students who get the scholarships, and you just have to be the best, so to say. But what it really means is that you have to have good math, you have to have good English, you have to be active in your school and perform very well in the interview. Uh, and you have to have good grades in your school as well. Claudia, anything you would like to add here? Well, that uh, certainly the, the studies in RBS are not, are not cheap, but uh, our experience is that those people that fight, even when they don't get the scholarships, you know, they get the student loan are available because of these are you know official programs and and there is a lot of financial support from the government on that uh and the banks and uh and then you know what we know from our graduates the, it's not that difficult to repay those loans afterwards and, and also the the internships you know many times are paid and the, the summer is a four month summer so you can really do a shop where you can get your salary and depending how what are your aspirations to go to dual degrees, uh, so that sometimes you can also start to have part-time jobs in the in the second year. So that's I would not um, I, I I I would suggest you to be very in that sense very ambitious and 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 we we have seen our students really even those that didn't get the scholarship they really manage very well the financial side of the program. Mm -hmm. So the next question is from Aline. Uh, can I apply with 11 years of education as a Belarusian stu student? Yes, you can. Um, that, that's the short answer, but um, yeah. So uh, we have a lot of international students with 11 uh, years of education and, and that's fine. Uh, you just apply and, uh, and we do the paperwork to validate your high school education here for Latvian higher education system, and uh, that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, and then there is one more question from Daria, and uh, she asks that she would like to know more about opportunities after education. Uh, so I understand that that's about opportunities of work. Uh, so maybe I could ask uh, Eva uh, to comment this. Uh, so how did you feel after graduation uh, what are the what were the opportunities that you felt that you have after having RBS degree? Well, sky is the limit. Um, <laughs> I think RBS has so many the variety of courses that you go through. It's so you know wide, uh, you know, with the mandatory courses, and then uh, at least that's how it was when I was studying. You have a lot of uh, elective courses that you can choose to take if that's your preference. So you can tailor the course list uh, based on your needs and your wants. Um, as for me, I think I went through like 30 different courses and yet I am still working in the area that was not covered by the university. <laughs> um, like we, I work in communications now, but we didn't have a communications course, but that 
doesn't really matter because you know communications is something that is integrated within every subject so that worked out well for me um, before I worked in a bank uh, and uh, you know, between joining Printful and working in a bank, I also did some freelance work with the Art Academy of Latvia and actually also some real estate companies. So I think because the courses and the study program at RBS is so much tailored towards skills and competencies versus facts, as you know, we sometimes you know have in you know primary school or, you know, higher uh, high schools. Um, so the courses are so much tailored to competencies versus, you know, factual learning that I think it is up to you to, up, to take those skills and apply them to whatever journey that you're taking. Um, so you're going to learn, you know, critical thinking, logical thinking, uh, financial literacy, and those things you can take with you uh, in whatever career path you choose. So I don't want to limit and say, you know, these are the sectors where you can work, uh, because I really think that you can take the skill set and apply it everywhere uh, if your heart's in it. Thank you, Eva. Um, Constantine, I know that you want to add something. Yeah, even I'm not a graduated still, but uh, what I want to share, because I, ha I had some also worries when I was choosing the university, like what it will give me and so on. I'd like to say that, uh, business education itself, especially the business school, is unique because it gives you a huge scope of knowledge, both like financial, entrepreneurial, marketing, or social sciences. And uh, that's a huge benefit because while you're studying, you have a lot of like guest lectures, you do internship during summer, you have a lot of projects. So we like always get uh, a lot of news about new projects. And uh, yeah, that will especially like uh, help any person to find the uh, like uh, vacation uh, he or she would like to do. That's why uh, if you're still thinking what you would like to do, don't worry because uh, fin like, as I said, I'm not graded, but I feel that when you finish regular school, you have a lot of opportunities. You have already connections with some companies or just have a expanded network. So yeah. In that term, this is a like unique opportunity, in my opinion. Thanks. Thank you, Constantine. Uh, we still have Bruno here as well, right? Yes. Bruno, maybe you can also comment on this. You're a recent graduate, so you were uh, you had to choose what you want to do uh, quite recently. So maybe you can share a, a little bit about that experience and how RBS education factored in that choice. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of great points were made from Eva and Constantine's. Yeah, because uh, because the like the studying process gives you so many opportunities to join in so many fields of uh, finance and business that uh, you don't. If you like, uh, for example, if you like marketing, that's great. We have a course for that. But you don't. It doesn't mean that you are gonna have to go into marketing. You can choose other fields. For me, uh, working in AML, um, I got into it through the summer internship actually. I applied for a position as a, a assistant and they really liked how I worked and they, they offered me a, 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 and the next position up and being an investigator. So uh, in, in school, we uh, in university, we don't really have anything specific tailored to AML and uh, uh, area of that. But uh, the skills you can learn from uh, different courses, you can put together and create your own path to the a career goal that you're looking for. Thank you, Bruno. Uh, and yeah, you see that uh, Bruno and Eva, they're, uh, they're doing, I think, very different things in, the, in their day-to-day -day work, but they went through pretty much the same program. Uh, so I think that alone is, is a proof of what they both were saying, that you can use the skills and craft your own path. Uh, thank you. Uh, one more question from Yekaterina. Uh, she would like to know the costs of education. So uh, the study fee uh, is, uh, I will not be able to tell you the specific number, but it's approximately 4,000 per year. Uh, you can find the specific amount on our webpage, but it's approximately 4,000 per year. So BBA program is three years. Um, if you decide to go to the US, then it's four years, but then it's a different tuition fee for the US. And BITL program is four years. So, yes. 
Anything yeah. else? Yeah, yeah. I've got, a, I've got a, one more question. <laughs> uh, what is the typical like study day? Is it like five five uh, work days in a week where you go to lectures and then after that there's some uh, some projects you have to do with your with your peers or uh, how is it like in, in practical? Sorry. That's an excellent question, Martin. Thank you. Uh, I think we could uh, ask uh, Katrina because I, uh, I understand you're interested in Bittel more. Uh, so let's see what Bittel students say. Katrina, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, a typical study day, of course, well, it's uh, lectures at first. They start at uh, nine in the morning, most of the days. And they might be very short days. There might be long days where you have to study but it pretty much depends on you how hard do you want to how hard do you uh, how good do you want to succeed because of course you can only study for like two hours a day and get what you get but you can study every like every single moment of your working day and then get really good grades but um i must say that it's not that hard that you will study every single day after lectures yeah there will be some days where the studies are harder but in the total it's it's manageable, let's say. If you have good scheduling skills, then it's certainly manageable and you won't overwork yourself too hard. Carly, I have a feeling you want to add something. Um, yeah, um, well, I, I, def I definitely uh, am not the person who who manages the time as, as well as I would want. So I, I use up some uh, Sundays or Saturdays, some hours from them as well. But it uh, really depends on time management, as, as it was already said. Um, and also, it, it kind of depends week on week. So if, if, for example, I have some homework with which I have difficulty, uh, of course, it will take more time than, than, than some tasks that I, I know I can uh, accomplish. And I know the approach I should take for them. So uh, I guess don't be scared. but. Uh, it really depends on person to person uh, because I know that uh, my course mates manage the, their time completely differently. And uh, I guess what works for you is, is good. So, yeah. Thank you, Carly. Uh, Constantine, maybe you want to add from the BBA side for those who are more interested in BBA. Sure. I just want to say first that uh, it's normal that uh, during uh, your like beginning studying, uh, you get used to that dynamic uh, environment because like in any university, you have some time of adaptation and then you get used to like study hard and at the same time have time for rest or party or whatever. If you take a, like a typical school day of BBA, well, it's, uh, yeah, it's lectures. It's a lot of group work, not on just uh, during lectures, but apart from it, because we have, a, we have a lot of assignments where we have to work together. Basically, I would say that even at any course, I can remember any group work. And it's great because it develops a lot of skills. And yeah, it's not easy sometimes, but that's good. And uh, if we study in place, I'm really, I really hope that it will come back soon. So it's also a lot of fun between lectures. It's uh, communication with your, uh, your course mates, having some fun or prepare some events together. If you are a part of student union, it's also additional job. Uh, you should somehow manage uh, together with uh, studies. So yeah, it's the, how the like study day looks like it. So thank you. I think the point about group work uh, was a very good one, uh, and I just wanted to add here that uh, yeah, what Constantine said that it's not only in the class but also outside of the class. Uh, so it, it's also a very good skill that students develop to manage not their only their own time, but also to manage between themselves when they will meet with the group, how they will structure their work. So they learn to be managers throughout doing their assignments. Uh, so I think that's that's very good as well. So we have two more questions. Uh, Elisa asks, does the university apply the module system in the learning? A short answer is no, but I believe Claudia wants to give a longer answer. That's a very good question. Uh, the yeah, I mean, generally, as a principal, no, uh, because we don't believe that's the right approach to teaching and learning and learning, mainly learning than teaching. Actually, it's why some institutions use the modular system uh, 
it's more convenient from the ticking sites because you if you want to you know as, as we have the ambition to have great professors that are with international background in different ways you know sometimes it's easier to bring them for one week two weeks or three weeks so it's a module uh, but from the learner side that's not always a good idea it's different for example we have a summer course uh, or a couple of summer courses actually that uh, are modular based um, basically you are in the summer it's a course you want to take it's elective so it's not on mandatory so you have a module there or you we have in in march we'll have one in artificial intelligence you know we have the with one company so it's a three days module one credit point so we have those elements across but this but it's not good from in, in our understanding uh from the uh, and in our partners understanding so when you look at the science of learning is not really good from the learning perspective because you you need you know if it's not only about accumulating knowledge but it's about connecting the dots and trying to get between different subjects and it's about getting project done so and you need time for that and also because it's not what happens in real life at the end of the day so the, there are very few places where you are going to work where you will be able to say, okay, these two weeks I will work in this project. And then the next two weeks I will work in, the, in this project. I mean, the most normal thing in the show market is multitasking and multiprojecting. So you, <laughs> you have different projects, you have multitasking, and you have to have the capacity to multitask and to work in different projects. So we think that even though it would be convenient, even for us to provide you a more modular system, we think it's not the right way to do it for you. Thank you, Claudia. And then I guess the last question from Alina is what is the right time to send in the application? So I would say the month of April. If you send it in in April by April 28th, then it's fine. You can send it in sooner, but there is really no need to do that. So April is fine. Yeah, so it's already one o'clock we started at 11 we have had you here for two hours it's quite some time to be online without a break so uh i think it's the right time to to close this session uh i would just like to say that if you have any other questions feel free to reach out um it's easy to find our emails online it's basically name surname at rbs.lv so if you have any questions feel free to write to us. Uh, we can have an individual session uh, to talk specifically about your case. If you have any questions uh, about um, which program to choose, how to structure your studies, we can discuss all of that. Um, so Claudio, I will hand it over to you for the last closing words. Well, I, I think it was great. I think we have so many very nice questions and uh, this video will stay in, in Facebook. Um, thank you to, to our students and graduates and faculty members that have been today as well participating. We are aware that it's Saturday morning. It's a, it's a working day in Latvia, but not really in practice. Uh, and uh, so, but we are here, and, and you can, I think you can feel how passionate we are about this program. I never graduated in this program, but I have been in this program for 10 years. So I consider myself a sort of big, the biggest learner in the in both in the bachelor of business and in the baltic it leadership we are very passionate about that and we are looking forward to see you here in real life very very soon whenever covid allow us to do it hopefully around february so from my side thank you so much and houston we are fine paula do we close yeah hope to see you soon bye everyone okay. cheers okay, goodbye goodbye